Hi YouTube, how are you? You okay? You doing well? Doing good? I'm glad. Me? Nah, I'm alright. Neither high nor low. Anyway, uh, this is going to be a video response to the Cinefiles. If you don't know what the Cinefiles is, where have you been? Um, it's my favourite movie review show. Uh, they've recently switched YouTube channels um, to This Is Infamous, but I will leave a link down below to the video that this is a response of if that makes sense. The topic this time round was gateway films. So that's movies that really started your love of watching films, whether it was going to the cinema or sitting down watching uh, a movie with your family or your friends, whatever it was. Um, the films that really made you realise that you wanted to be a film fan or a fan of film, uh, not just someone who casually watches movies, but someone who's really, really interested in them, maybe even interested in the process of making them um, and all the sort of behind the scenes tidbits that you get in DVDs and Blu-rays these days, all that good stuff. So whatever it is, the films that made you fall in love with film in general. So I thought it would be fun to talk a little bit about, if I can get these words out, I thought it would be fun to talk a little bit about the, the movies that had that effect on me, the films that created this lifelong passion for watching movies that I've had since I was a kid. And I would really, really like to hear what uh, you ragtag bunch uh, think of that as well, what sort of films got you into watching films. Because I'm, I'm assuming that if you're subscribed to this channel you're probably a film fan unless you just like this ugly face which I um, very much doubt. So anyway, um, going back, cast your mind back. I was born in 1980 given my, my age away there. And uh, so I grew up in the 1980s and that was a time that was really uh, overshadowed or dominated by Spielberg and this reaction to, to 1970s grimmer movies. In the 1980s you had a lot of sentimentality, you also had a lot of looking back, a lot of the, the popular films at that time were movies that explored issues that kids would have growing up and uh, the relationships and the angst of of being a, a teenager as well. Um, so we had like, a lot of Spielberg's movies and um, also John Hughes as well and a lot of the films that I, I really loved were, were films of that ilk because I was growing up and these were films that were exploring um, exploring what it was like to, to be growing up in, in the 1980s as well, you know. Uh, so I think that just that, being a kid, being the same age as, as kids that were in films like The Goonies, for example, which is a Richard Donner film, but it was directed by Spielberg. It, all the way around. It was written by Spielberg. It was directed by Richard Donner. Um, being a similar age to those kids, uh, I think just connected you to to the movies at that time because that was such a big thing. Um, I sometimes think it's a real shame. I, I don't think you really get films like that now or, or you very, very rarely do uh, where, where films are genuinely um, genuinely capture the spirit of, of being that age. Uh, but anyway, that's a topic for another video. Um, we're talking about gateway films here. So that was the sort of environment that I grew up in with, with movies. And uh, Talking of Spielberg, like one of the biggest franchises, obviously that, that ever there's ever been, and one of the the biggest series of films that Spielberg's been involved in, um, or only series that Spielberg's been involved in, uh, was the Indiana Jones movies. And going back to Raiders of the Lost Ark, what I first fell in love with about movies, bizarrely, I don't know if it's that bizarre, but it's interesting to me when I think about it, it was the stunt work. It was all about, you know, for me when I was a kid, I got interested in films because of the stunts. I was like amazed by them, which was quite interesting because I was the adventurous kid in terms of like, I would be like that to my friend, let's go over there and climb up that hill and go, you know, that that's kind of the way I was, but I wasn't a daredevil, you know, like uh, my other friends were, so I kind of lived vicariously through them, you know, I would be the one that would be like, let's go and see what that big tree looks like up in that hill, we climb up to it and then 
my other friends would be like, yeah, let's climb to the top of it and then jump to another tree and, you know, and I would be like, okay, you guys do that. I'll watch. But I think likewise, I lived sort of vicariously through these incredible stunts that were being performed on film. And that was what was great about that time as well and, and all the times leading up to, the, to then, um, <clears throat> excuse me, was because it, when you watch something, when you watched a stunt, it was real. It wasn't CG. It was it, it was it was real, and you knew it was real to to at least a degree. So you knew there was jeopardy. You knew there was um, danger involved, and that led a, a real element of risk and tension to what you were watching. Um, especially when you would read later on that some of these stunt people got really badly injured in the stunts they were doing. But anyway, so I was a, I was like so interested in stunt work and watching. The Indiana Jones movies especially, but but that first film, Raiders of the Lost Ark, which is just still to this day an incredible adventure movie. It really is. It's, it's phenomenal. Um, but the whole scene with the trucks and with the truck rather, with the the Ark and uh, all the the Nazis are on board on this truck and Indiana Jones is on this this truck and climbing around it, and knocking each of them off, and they're all falling by the side of the truck and. And then you know when he's got his whip and he's sliding underneath the um, underneath the truck as it's speeding along and stuff like that. That all really really amazed me, um, and it and it kind of um, it kind of it kind of blew my mind, you know, that people were doing these sorts of stunts, and I couldn't figure out how they were doing them as well. And I think that kind of um, that that kind of sparked that part of me that's just really curious with these things like how would you sort of do something like that but I think, I have a very early memory of this, I think the reason that that scene in particular really uh, stuck with me in terms of stunt work and things like that was because there was an old film I used to watch, a, I grew up really like watching uh, a lot of movies from like the 40s and 50s and things like that in fact, the thirties as well, even earlier. Like I had, that was a sort of film education that I had. You know, my mum and dad watched those sorts of films, so I watched them with them, and they were shown all the time on TV over here in the United Kingdom. It was great. They don't really seem to show films now on television, which is a bit weird. Um, but you used to always get those sorts of movies, and I always remember watching a film called Stagecoach, and I think it was when I was really, really young. And my dad talked about. Um, the stunt work on that, and there's a really, really famous stunt in that, which is very similar to the stunt on uh, in Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark, where um, he's going underneath the, the truck. This happens in Stagecoach as well, and the guy that that, um, that did that, what's his name, ya Yakimir Knut, something like that, I really apologise if I've got his name wrong. Um, it's, it's an incredible stunt. It really is. It's an amazing stunt, and uh, you know, <laughs> this in stagecoach, the the guy actually um, actually like it's a stagecoach with horses, and he just looks like he's getting trampled to death as he's falling underneath underneath it as it's speeding along. Really, really incredible. But but that's what they were used to then. Um, all through the silent era, people like Buster Keaton, Harold Lloyd, and all that they they did their own their own stunts, and even ones that were really quite dangerous. But anyway. You're probably wondering, am I really talking about gateway films? I am, because <laughs> what I'm saying is that the movies that had stunt work in them were the films that ignited my imagination first in a lot of ways. Those were the movies that I started falling in love with the idea of someone made this. Someone made this, or a group of people made this. Um, and that that was something that, that, that really blew my mind. Um, and when I think about it, there were a lot of films at the time, especially like um, a lot of ones, excuse me, my leg falls, falls asleep, um, the, that was the chair, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to, need to cut this out, uh, and I really need to get a chair that's not so squeaky, it's getting ridiculous now, I've had this chair for about four or five years, and it makes all sorts of weird noises, um, so, where was I? Can you remember where I was? Because I can't. Um, yeah, there were a lot of films like Smoking the Bandit, for example, right? Films that had car chases. 
those were the movies with stunt work. You know, I was amazed by uh, physical stunt work that I would see in movies, but I was also like, you know, uh, by like people. But I was amazed by the drivers as well. I've said that like drivers aren't people, um, but the stunt work that you would see in uh, Smoking the Bandit uh, in movies like that with these amazing car chases just made me fascinated by what was going on and 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 the, the sort of movie making process and all that and how they they did these things and um the blues brothers as well you know that car chase which is to this day my favorite car chase of all time hands down uh people always talk about like bullet and french connection and stuff like that. fantastic movies fantastic uh car chase sequences but uh the blues brothers even though it's a total over the top cartoony car chase, I don't think there's any other car chase quite like it and, and it's just to this day still look, you're my favourite when I watch it um, and John Candy's one line during that, uh, we're in a truck uh, really really amazing, I'm not doing that uh, I'm not doing that well but anyway so it was the stunts in films that got me into loving movies and that started this questioning when I was watching films like, like how did they do that you know, um, but what I would say is that I, I wasn't doing that like on a first viewing. First viewing, I was always right into a film. You know, I was always like just captivated by it, and I still am to this day. If it's a good story, I'm not thinking that I'm watching a movie. I'm in the story. I'm just there with it. Um, I'm not saying going how to do that. How to do that. You know, I'm I'm in it, um, and that's the way I was then. It would be afterwards that I would go. You know. How did they do that? So those were the movies that really got me into being a film fan. Okay, I didn't use the the phrase "I'm a film fan" probably till I was about thirteen, but that is what I was then. I just had a voracious appetite for movies. Um, maybe living a bit too vicariously through them, but you know, I just I, I love things that celebrate imagination, and and that's what films were for me growing up. What's interesting is that that love for sort of stunt work and things like that then moved into John Carpenter movies like you know the thing and wondering how they put all that wonderful uh, animatronic and special effects together. Um, American Movie from London how they did the effects and that the transformation scenes. And what's interesting to me is that I've always been interested. I need to stop using the word interested. I've always been focused on the story, at least that's what I thought of a film, that that's what was most important to me, that's what I would get involved in, but doing this video has made me realise that one of the things that got me into loving movies and seeing myself as a, a fan of film from a very, very young age, it was actually the nuts and bolts stuff, it was the, the stuff, the, the trickery, the illusions, you know, the stunt work, the, the special effects, these sorts of things, it was those type of movies that really got me interested in film and, and on special effects I know I've mentioned the CG thing but again because a lot of the special effects were in camera they were real things that were actually there it was interesting to see how people put that together it just added such a greater, greater depth greater level of depth and greater level of charm to the movies as far as I can see um, even when the even if the special effects were a bit hokey at times um, so anyway, that's the films that sort of got me into into loving movies and seeing myself as a bit of a a, a film fan. The movies that were a bit of a revelation for me it was from a very very young age, like four, five, six. For you, it might have been much older. I don't know, but what are the movies that made you fall in love with film? What are the 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 films that made you consider yourself a real film fan? And this was something that you were going to. Uh, really make a hobby or, or pastime or whatever it's been in your life uh, that you would always be watching films and always be interested in them. I'm really uh, fascinated by what your responses are going to be because maybe you'll mention some films that I haven't even watched and that's one of the great things about this YouTube channel is that I've, I've watched so many great films because you have all recommended them to me and uh, that's been wonderful. So go and check out the Cinefiles down below watch their video, um, it's a great uh, film discussion and definitely check out the rest of their their uh, back catalogue of videos and subscribe to the This Is Infamous uh, YouTube channel as well. 
and uh, check out Facebook page, all that good stuff down there. And one last thing, I'm thinking of maybe doing a Woody Allen series. I'm watching a lot of Woody Allen recently. I don't know. What do you think about that? Um, and I will be doing an announcement about the 31 Horrors of Mike, which is something that I've done in the last couple of years throughout October. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do it yet, but uh, I'm going to make a video about that in the next few days. I don't know if you can hear it, my voice is going, so I'm going to go. Uh, let me know what you thought about the video and your own uh, recollections of the movies that made you love film. And I'll be back sooner rather than later. Uh, bye for now.